Hello, everyone. Welcome to a new Monero Meet. I'm really happy with all the new news that have been going on. There's just a flourishing of Monero activity between the Monero Research Lab, between Cake Wallet, between On Today's and what they're doing at the Mono Rio team. And it's just really fun to see everything happening in the Monero development side, it's like, you know, cycle things right now. Um, so we'll do the introductions, of course. I'm Justin. I'm a nobody. Uh, we have MB on with us right now. Yeah, I, I do the stickers. We got a sticker guy, awesome. Uh, but they've really also stepped up to do a lot of various community and you know development side of things. So it's all fantastic. We have Ko. Mm -hmm. Hi, everyone. Hey, Ko. Uh, we have Plausoff. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome. We have Andres. Hello. How is everybody doing? I think we, I hope everyone had a good holiday. And, the cat. <laughs> and we have HYC. Hey, how are you doing? And my awesome. cat, Simon. Cat Simon. Well, thank you, Simon, for joining us. They should join us more often. <laughs> <laughs> we, um, Seth should be hopping on in a minute. He's, he'll sit and give the reason why he's not on right now, but it seems important. All right. Um, I want to quickly start just by giving people a reminder that the Monero Magic Fund, um, Voting closes in a few days. The final day is the 12th. Over half of people have voted. There are 10 people running for committee position. So that's pretty exciting. There will be a new separate group of people that get to, you know, help fund things like Monero Research Lab development and code audits and, and draw people in that way. So it should be pretty, pretty exciting. Um, and uh, just a quick reminder on these Monero meets. If you have any questions, comments, etc., Leave them in the YouTube chat. We'll get to them. This is meant to be super casual. So make sure that you know, hold us honest for that. <laughs> um, all right. So I think I want to first just uh, hand it off to Ko to talk about the various Monero Research Lab things that have been going on because there are regular meetings once a week on these topics. And there's just so many different discussions going on in this space right now. So Ko, can you give a, a, a high level overview of what exactly is happening, what the major discussions are? in uh, the Monero Research Lab space? Um, sure. So the biggest topic right now is JamTith, which is Tevador's pro proposal for uh, a comprehensive address scheme that can work with Seraphis. Uh, this, it's changed a few times, but the, like the high level overview is it allows multiple tiers of wallets with different permissions, so different capabilities. And also it defines this like uh, certificate kind of scheme for addresses. So allowing you to certify that an address came from you. Um, and then these certificates can be matched up with identities that you can like save in a local address book this way there's some kind you can have some kind of validation of a person's address that they give you that it's actually from them as opposed to just maybe you being the the uh victim of a man in the middle or something um yeah that's that's what's going on with jam Test. there's also some other like speculative research topics that have kind of been discussed. Uh, one of them is how, how can we get around the 10 block lock time uh, that kind of really annoys a lot of people involved with uh, like actually using Monero, <laughs> at least for like rapid, rapid kind of use cases for Monero. Um, that kind of, I think that's at a dead end, honestly, but it was an interesting discussion that we had over in the MRL issues, uh, different ways that could work. And I guess the conclusion was that there's no real way that it can be done without some kind of reduction in privacy somewhere in the system. And so this kind of undermines the privacy by default uh, assumption that this kind of embedded in Monero's design. Um, 
maybe in the future someone will have a brilliant idea, but I'm not very optimistic that um, it can be done without some kind of privacy implication. Uh, there was also a new idea about how to have dummy inputs to a transaction. Some people are interested in transactions being more indistinguishable by enforcing a, a fixed number of inputs and outputs per transaction. Uh, and then you can have dummy inputs and dummy outputs to like hide how many real inputs and outputs you have. Uh, I think it's technically feasible, but personally I'm kind of skeptical due to the uh, scaling ramif ramif ramifications. Yeah, you will kind of fix them out of inputs, you'd have to like more than double the size of transactions, maybe even quadruple or whatever. So I'm kind of skeptical about that, but it's a discussion that's going ongoing. Other than that, um, I don't think any other topics have really been hot, hot topics recently, but maybe I'm forgetting something. Of course, I'm continuing to work on my therapist proof of concept. Uh, my focus right now is on designing a wallet architecture uh, that's, that works with Jamtis um, that could be used for like a, a final implementation or at least a model for a final implement implementation. Uh, I'm still making sure I, I've, I fully understand the whole picture because it's kind of encompasses a lot of details and um, possible variation. So how to handle like hardware wallets or remote scanning and uh, ledgers that are, that could be local versus remote and stuff like that. that that's all for me. Yeah, thanks, Co. Is anyone else here participating in the MRL discussions and wants to give a, a comment on these sorts of things? Again, the best way to follow is just attending the meeting every Wednesday. No, no one here wants to comment on MRL stuff. Okay. <laughs> I saw also Justin Berman worked uh, separately on the Monero WL, uh, LWS server. He's been focusing on making sure that sub addresses are properly accounted for. Um, so that's, uh, I think that's pretty interesting. Um, so that's just something else to look forward to as well. If you are, you know, trying to have a more efficient way of running a node, of course, that is somewhat combined with the discussions on how we handle view keys with Seraphis and stuff too. That's at least a similar conversation, but those, all those sorts of things are happening <laughs> at the same time. Um, HYC, wh what have you been seeing that's been uh, in development on the, the Monero dev side? Um. Gosh, you know, I haven't really been paying that much attention in the past couple of weeks. Uh, was off in La La Land over, why. <laughs> over the holidays, yeah. Um, so I don't have much to, to tell you right now. Okay, awesome. What about you, Andreas? Anything from Monorio? You guys raised money for a proof of concept, I see. Yes, we actually did. Um, that was a nice uh, news. For us, um, the the funding the funding that we are using right now is remember it's not the CCS, or the CSS no the CCS. I always mix those those two together and um, and yeah we we put up due to an enormous amount of pressure for, from users <laughs> for the past maybe three or four years maybe. When is iOS coming up? When when is iOS coming up? So we decided to test the waters, and we found it was actually fun to try to do it. So we put up the um, the project for funding, and it got funded in uh, three days or something like that. Um, so I don't want to talk bad about the other little features that we got funded so far, but this is the most successful funding stuff that we that we made through the our website that is uh, it's funding that app uh, you can check that out and it's a nice way 
something that sometimes um, gets not very discussed, but I think it's interesting. We also pay attention to the amount of no, not only to the amount. I mean, to the amount of donations, not not just the amount being donated. So it's kind of like a way to gush a bit of interest in the community. You don't need to be a whale for for us to notice that some feature is going is going is being very requested. If you see a lot of small donations, uh, of course, due to the nature of Monero, it could be the same person. <laughs> yeah, I'm like I'm, several I'm times. I'm yeah. thinking I should just send a transaction to you with 15 outputs, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, well, just forget about the whole thing. You're not going to get it to get it done faster. Don't spam us. But it is interesting. I mean, at least for me, it is. I, I'm not talking for the other the other two guys. At least for me, it's interesting to see that because uh, it's a small sample to to make assumptions, but it's interesting how some features get more support, but less money, so to speak. Um, and which ones gets gets more money, but but less individual contributors. So yeah, for a, a nice nice example of that is the um, the support for the darker theme that the one that we have now. People want just pure OLED black theme. I understand them. I love those themes, but it's I I don't really remember how how much it was. I think it was two or three moneros. I don't. Uh, let me see, five five XMRs, which today is like twenty dollars or something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> oh, I don't want to check. But but it got it got several several donors. Um, people talk about that a lot. It's like, come on, people found it, found it, found it. They really want that. But iOS is quite a big bigger thing, and it got funded. So uh, we already had two uh, funded and already delivered. We recently did um, the offset pass, the support for offset pass phrases on, uh, in the seeds. I liked your blog that. post about that. It was, I mean, just like your post about how sub addresses and accounts work in Monero, this was a very easy to understand post. I know that you feel the pain as well, Justin, uh, because <laughs> sometimes it's like, yeah, we can do this. And <laughs> it gets so exciting. <laughs> And then it's like, okay, explain it to me. I, I, I initially like a good thermometer of a normal human being, not a Monero research lab person or something like that. Uh, so it's like, okay. And I asked all the uncomfortable questions, especially to, to M2049er, which is the main um, the developer of Monero that actually knows how to call stuff. So yeah, it's a very interesting feature, the offset path phrases. And it has a at least one one use case that I love that I specify on my article there, which is uh, I don't know if we should explain it briefly here or not. Uh I'm sorry, I don't know what you're actually talking about. <laughs> so maybe that's ah. an invitation to say yes. <laughs> no, okay, okay. Basic no, from the user's perspective, I mean not from the technical perspective, from the user's perspective, it's just it's an extra word or phrase or whatever kind of number that you want to enter, words, spaces, whatever, that you add to the to the original randomly generated seed that, that you get when you create a wallet, right? So from the user perspective, in Monero, you at least, I know it's already available in the, in the GUI wallet and somebody told me that it's also in Feather wallet on the desktop. I think it is. I haven't checked myself. I don't think um, it's actually in the GUI. It's in the GUI, yes. Okay. I well, see it today I learned. Somebody <laughs> very acknowledged of the subject told me very, very with a lot of certainty that it was available on the on the GUI. Okay. But even more so if it's just on the on the on the command line wallet and it's a very cypherpunk thing. Now it's on an uh, actual graphical inter interface that you can use on, on your phone. Uh, from the user perspective, you just create a new wallet, for example. Um, Monero you does this thing, checking with the Monero code, gives you a normal seed, the one that you will usually write down. But the interesting thing is that you can, and you should write that down, and just imagine come up with something like a, like a basically it's like a password, an extra phrase that you should remember. And when you enter that in the, in the description box that you have there, it, it, joins both things and creates a new seed, basically. 
which is a combination of, of the, the random seed and the word that you enter. And the interesting thing to the user by doing that is that you can store in your secret drawer, whatever, uh, your seed as you normally would, you, would do. And if somebody finds that seed and tries to recover your wallet and steal all your funds, which is something that you won't be able to notice until it's gone. It's, it's not like you, ha you can have like a warning saying, hey, somebody logged into your wallet or something. Not Web 2.0. Right, so this is like just stealthy, evil maze stuff. Uh, they recover your funds and you lost them. Uh, by doing this, the wallet that you are using in Monerubio is actually the commission of both both stuff. So, if somebody recovers that that wallet or restores that wallet just by using the normal seed without the extra phrase, they will just see another wallet, like an empty wallet or one that you just put. Three tenths of an error to mm, be very, very, very decoy yourself. Um, but that that's basically the use case um, for that. And of course, it's it's out of beta now because it works. But you should you should only use that if you know what you're doing. I can okay. imagine already people, and and that's very hard to troubleshoot. I was also, supposed you know? to write down my password. What yes, do you mean? Yes. <laughs> we we are doing our best. We. We try to err on the side of safety and caution, but that sometimes get people locked out of their funds. And it's tricky. People mixed up seed with password, with passphrase, and we have like a special password for encrypting the wallet's files that is the crazy pass or the restore password. So that's also in the mix. So yes, more education and better UX coming up, I suppose. <laughs> but technically it <laughs> works, technically it works. And the offset passphrases are, are very, very interesting. Um, we are also exploring some other ways that we can play with that in the in the UI, so it's even more useful. Got it. And, and I want to talk introduce Plowsoft here because Plowsoft's the person who made the backend for the Wound Rubio or not Wound Rubio, Motor Rubio uh, fun system, probably also the Wound Arrow one or whatever. But um, <laughs> but. So, Plasov, can you talk a little bit about that, and then also what you're doing for Magic with that, with that as well? Because we're considering using this ourselves to help raise money for various projects. Um, yeah, hello, um, yeah, I'm the uh, wish list guy. Um, basically, the wish list that you see now on Monarujo that's being used is um, Monero only donations, and every donation is to the same sub address. So. For example, Magic wanted to have um, receipts or email notifications sent to the donator. And I can't, it's not possible if everyone's donated to the same uh, sub address. So <clears throat> the new wish list I've been working on is, uh, generates a new sub address, which people can donate to, and also fill in the form along with their email address and also a uh, refund address attached, which is uh, important to. Um, yeah, and as well, also adding in some uh, fiat payment options for Magic specifically, such as uh, Apple Pay, Google Pay, Visa credit card, that sort of thing. With uh, I think it's Square API offers that. So I have an example of this. Uh, it's multi crypto wish list only at the moment. It's on uh, Get. The website is Get Wishlisted. Dot X Y Z. You can go there and see an example of that. You've got Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin also alongside Monero. Um, yeah. And I'm just working on adapting that to, to have also the, uh, the fiat payment options for Magic specifically. Yeah, so just to paint the picture here, you know, suppose you go to a proposal and you want to be able to contribute to it. You can see that people have donated in like any of these various assets. So you can pull out your Monero wallet and pay it, or you can pull out your credit card and pay it and it'll still show up in the same place to be like, hey, money's raised here. And from Magic's perspective, as a nonprofit who, you know, can accept crypto, like credit payments, like it is kind of cool to be able to support both. So um, I, I really find this really exciting from Magic's perspective. I think the Magic Monero Fund will really take advantage of this because we can accept safely without putting a, you know, private key on a server somewhere. We can put the view key there and we can still have a very unique way for people to donate, get the, 
um, email tax deduction notification donation receipt those sorts of fun things that uh, that people get out of other platforms like the giving block right now so yeah this is great from my perspective <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, wanna... go ahead the website at get get wishlisted.xyz is accepting uh, test coins at the moment staging coins so if you want to go there and save the hedgehogs and donate to one of the proposals That'd be much appreciated. Awesome. Well, thank you, Pasoff. Um, Monero Bull, what what community projects have you been working on recently? Because you're in the Discord, you're doing stickers. I saw you on Monero Topia recently. You seem to be just jumping headfirst in everything. Uh, basically, anything that doesn't involve coding or something like that. I'm trying to help as much as I can with stuff that I can help with. So yeah, that includes the sticker group I took over, uh, the Discord. Um, yeah, other than that, I'm not sure. What what have you what project have you found to be like the most fun that you worked on so far? Uh, I really like playing around with the Discord bridge uh, program. That was quite a lot of fun and maintaining that is also interesting. Um, like I bridged the Telegram group, which is different from bridging mat matrix channels. And so I'm learning a lot of stuff there. And sending out packages with stickers is also fun. Yeah, that's about it. I'm glad someone enjoys maintaining bridges because <laughs> I gave up on that. <laughs> Um, no, that's awesome. I mean, obviously, it's, there's a ton of different community work to, to do. People don't need to know how to code to contribute to Monero. There's all sorts of ways people can help. And clearly, stickers have their niche that a lot of people actually really like. So that's an example of, hey, you can show up and help out there. And it's just been fantastic to see you be so present and, and so active there. Um, Ko, a question came in saying, are there plans for Seraphis to include built-in refund addresses? Uh, I don't think there's any plan like that. Like, I mean, it's not, it's a, that's kind of separate from Seraphis. It's just something where you add a memo field to your transaction or something. So that's kind of something you could do now, right now with extra fields, I think. Unless I'm misunderstanding. No, I believe that's correct. Um, yeah, we well, technically Monero supports everything <laughs> for TX Extra. <laughs> um, yeah, with the, someone asked a question about Thorchain, um, and it's, it's been a little bit annoying to work with them on some of these things, but uh, they have all these other projects and chains they're trying to integrate with, and um, Monero is different because when you take the assumption that if someone deposits money and you make, or you, you take the assumption that when someone deposits money, the address that it comes from is known. I mean, that's not known in Monero, right? So how do you solve that problem? And there's different ways to do it, but it's, it just involves more planning and they've kind of been distracted, I think. So been working on it, but uh, it's, it's just one of those things that might take a bit. I hope we, we still expect to work on it like this week and stuff. We've been working on it, but all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, so I want to quickly talk about Monero.com just because Cake Wallet released the Monero.com app, which is a Monero only app. People said that they wanted Cake Wallet without Bitcoin and Litecoin or whatever else. And so boom, Monero.com is there. It's live today for Android and iOS. So you can download it right now. Um, and we also, just for the Monero.com website, have a copy of the Cake Wallet site. But we want to change that very significantly. Um, we've actually been working on it, but there, uh, we moved the Monero.com app development forward for various reasons, and so that resulted as not as like the timelines mismatching slightly. So if there's something you want us to, you, you think would be very useful to see on the Monero.com website, let us know. Obviously, we'll link to the official GetMonero.org website because that is the official Monero website. 
but this is just meant to be a complimentary, more user-friendly, straightforward, resource-focused, less developer-focused website to get people onboarded and, and buying and using at Monero, right, is, is really the main goal of that site. Um, so yeah, any, any comments or questions here about that? I know we'll probably some other discussions about that too, but um, yeah, in Monerotopia, people were just happy that we got the, the Monero only app out finally. <laughs> I like the name. That's good. That's good. We get one vote. Woohoo! <laughs> it's just good to see that the Monero.com domain is no longer owned by a squatter. Yeah, that that, that kind of did suck. So we we didn't get Monero.org though. Too some random bad person has Monero.org, so that sucks. So the plan for the Monero.com website. It's also to be like educational content for Monero users, or yeah, at least like like a welcome to Monero. Yeah, like congrats, you found Monero. <laughs> what is it? How do you get started? What can you use it for? <laughs> nice. We we're joking with a few people um, that at the top we can put a little stupid banner that says like. Save 100% of your Chainalysis KYT bill with the <laughs> find out how, <laughs> um, yeah. which will take you to a page to be like, Well, did you know <laughs> that you can't just look up arbitrary things on Monero? <laughs> Who could have thought? But yeah, yeah, we're, all, we're always open to fun ideas like that. The rich list, uh, exactly. Yeah. Announcing the t rich list for 2022. <laughs> okay, so which wish list is is at the high? No, rich list is at the high of your wish list. I see. I see. Mm -hmm. have... That is a. I'm glad that I'm glad people. Someone made that back when they did. Was it like 2014, 2015 when someone made the original Monero wish list page? Yeah. I just thought that on the the Explorer. I thought that was pretty funny. Um, there will be there no, will be a Monero Explorer. Yeah. Hmm? What was that Andres? No, no, that's a cl classic Monero page, the one that says no, you cannot. <laughs> <laughs> Monero says no. Monero says no. Definitely. Um, okay, well, is there any other topics that you guys wanted to talk about? I know we all had the holidays we but uh <laughs> those are over now get back to work people <laughs> yeah it's it's been a very busy holiday season <laughs> here um but yeah again I, I just want to thank people who donated to to the monorio projects and also to something that has been uh, quite a surprise also um, a user from Reddit, like Wicked as Fuck, I think is his name, uh, created like an underground Monerullo channel for users in Telegram. Um, that's over 130 something people <laughs> over there, which is was a surprise for us and it's quite lively. So you're more than welcome. The team is hanging out there, but we don't run the thing. So it's Decentralization, yeah, <laughs> and it's pretty civil so far, so it's very interesting. And we also appreciate the feedback from people through that channel. Um, it's 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 good after that all this time to be able to, I don't know, jump ideas back and forth and to see to get some actual feedback quickly, be before you get like. <laughs> before you get the, the App Store review saying, ah, I have an issue with my wallet or something like that. So people, um, actual users help you to, to troubleshoot stuff and to make it better for everybody else. We now have the privacy in mind community is, nobody wants to share a lot. So uh, we try to design pretty blinded by our own guts, gut feeling and principles. And now we have a more a bit more feedback. So that's, also, I'm very thankful thankful for that. I mean, getting people to review an app is actually a very difficult 
challenge on the Monero side because nobody wants to like go to the app store and review it five stars. And the only people who end up showing up are people who are just angry. They show up and they're like, I couldn't send my Monero immediately. Why is there an unconfirmed balance? Zero stars. Yeah. And it's like, you're just sitting there just like, I can't like, but, but I, you, I, you have to suffer through the consequences of that. So it, it is a problem you, you like have to address in some capacity, but it's hard. Yeah, I I actually add that to one of the talks that I give and about precisely the reviews on the app stores because I suppose it's the same for most of the financial apps out there that if everything works as it should be, you don't have much to say or you don't feel very compelled to just leave a... It's not like you're passionate about, you know, your banking app or something. So... You feel like leaving a review when something breaks, and <laughs> and uh, so you you see the numbers, and I don't know, you have more than I think twenty five thousand users just from the the Google App Store. We are not on iOS yet, and but we, for example, we don't know how 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 many users we have from F Droid, for example, or for of the actual downloads of the APK or through GitHub or any of those places. So, and since it's a Monero wallet, which is people that are privacy minded, I'm guessing I have no idea, but it should be like a reasonable chunk of the users that get it through other means that are not the app store, right? So even that is not representative of the actual user base. And then you get the reviews, which is, if you run the numbers, like 0.1% of the only users that you have. So it's very tricky. Uh, and especially since, I don't know, I haven't checked in ages, but the number one Monero wallet uh, used to be free wallet, at least, which is something that you, if you spend five minutes uh, just reading about Monero anywhere else, you will find a banner saying, don't use free wallet like this. <laughs> Since at least since 2017, um, but if you just heard Monero in a news or something, and just look up in the App Store, it's the one number one app that you will find. Oh, so, do you know what I saw though? I need to quickly say I was searching the Google Play Store recently. I just searched Monero, nothing else. Guess what the first sponsored result was for that search term? I don't know, but if it's sponsored, it's not I'm kind of. I'm getting some weird feedback from somebody, um, but it was Coinbase. <laughs> Just nice. weird to see Coinbase getting like it. ads. Nice. Yes. <laughs> what is my Monero here? Exactly. <laughs> I searched for Monero specifically. It should take you to an app that says Coinbase says no. Coinbase says no. <laughs> but I just thought that was funny. Um, yes, also, I'll let Seth chime in once he has his audio is issues addressed. Or it looks like he doesn't yet. Um, who else would be a more funny sponsor of the term Monero other than Coinbase? Maybe like Dash or something? I don't know. I thought that <laughs> Robinhood uh, has like a price <laughs> page for it. You can't buy it, but you can view the price. That's funny. That's funny. I, yeah, I mean, I do wish even so that Robinhood allowed you to do that because let's be clear, there are zero compliance risks from someone not being able to deposit or withdraw a coin from your platform <laughs> as opposed to any other arbitrary asset. But uh, no, they don't support it, which honestly, I guess is better for in some ways, but it, uh, I mean... You shouldn't use that. That's that's not Monero. That's just you speculating on the price of something. <laughs> that's just gambling <laughs> more than anything else. So Robinhood's a good one. Yeah. Seth is saying something very interesting right now, but nobody can hear him. <laughs> but Seth, the I best you Seth say that about HYP. ever. You should start writing them now in the papers and show it to the webcam, Seth. 
while this is being sought out, I actually have a topic for the two uh, mobile wallet people here. Um, I don't know if you noticed, yesterday there was someone who used the GUI and the remote node, and it seems like the node was malicious or something. And they had a transaction fee of nearly four Monero, which really shouldn't happen. And now there were talks about implementing a warning if the uh, if the fee is way too high. So maybe you can look into that because especially with the mobile wallets, with the remote nodes, they would be a good feature, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as a general rule. It makes no sense for the transaction fee to be larger than the transaction amount. And in this case, it was what, a uh, hundred times larger or so, yeah. How, how does that even, ha how does the node, okay, I'm trying to think how that even happened because you could, if you're a malicious node, theoretically, they could tell you, hey, the network is super duper congested. You got to use this big fee of the hot, but then we have the fee, fee tiers. So there's like low, medium, high, and they can go to high. But... It was probably set to automatic in the wallet, so it just showed that what the node suggested. Interesting. If the node suggested a minimum fee of like one, and then you add the multiplier, you get four or something like that. Hmm. So how do you get to four Monero in a fee? You just take whatever the node suggested and multiply by the multiplier. It's a number. Oh, it's the note. Okay. And what what's the incentive for the node to do such a thing? It's, because... it's just harming the user. It's yeah. just attacking. I I for one would be very sad if I spent five moneros on a transaction. <laughs> I don't think I would keep recommending it. No, that should be like a Ethereum exclusive thing. How about now? Yeah. Hey, I need it. You got it, Seth. Just, Congrats. Just a, just a small thing about what she, what he just commented. I just read about the thing like a couple of one hour ago or something like that. Um, it is painful. Uh, so we still haven't discussed it with the team, but I think like a basic warning if the number seems way off. Uh, regarding the fees should be totally fine. I, I don't see why not to implement that in, on a wallet, especially in a mobile wallet. Like taking, I don't know, maybe it could, could be even hard coded that if it's above something that historically seems <laughs> super strange, like, what? No, wait, 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 warning, warning. Or at least Basically, like something... most, most of our issues with Monero in the past has been with malicious nodes. So it's either this or the, um, they report wrong stuff that messes up with the wallet file. So it's all since the, when was it? December 19, uh, 2019, I think it was like the big node thing. Yes, like a, like a year ago. Um, from that, that we are not mentioning. Um, the one that should not be named or something like that. Um, so yes, nodes are a pain in the ass. And I don't see why we shouldn't in implement something like that in Monroe, letting you know, wait, 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 don't press that button. It, it might be good to have to contact multiple nodes to get different opinions about what the fee should be. So you can at least have some level of checking instead of just trying unless you don't have node. multiple <laughs> nodes in your in your wallet like you may only have a single one specified like i usually restrict it to only my either my private node or to the my, my, my private node and my public nodes so that may not work in all cases but that would probably be well, good but if someone has only node. malicious nodes it wouldn't help either it just reduces the likelihood of it happening yeah, sure. And as a rule of thumb, we want to check with as little nodes as possible, as little times as possible, because every time you involve a node in something, it's slow. I mean, the experience sounds slow. Yeah, I'm curious if that worked by um, 
think it was RB RB Runner, Arb Runner, I'm not sure how to say that, is working on reducing the number of calls you have to make each time you reach out to a node. I'm curious what impact that will have on remote node usage to make it a lot speedier, at least that initial connection each time to a node that seems to take forever because I think you have to make four calls right now and he's working on reducing it to a single one. So that should be a big, big step forward, I think, and at least that initial timing that it takes to deal with a node. That will be awesome. That's what I miss. Anything crazy? Y'all partying over here while I was onboarding someone to Monero? I mean, I'm partying for the Monero.com thing, but... <laughs> Some big news. Yeah, that was pretty awesome to see finally come, come to life. It's a really important domain name, I think, for someone trustworthy to have. So, a great resource. Uh -huh. Oh, and I, I just need to make this joke just because I've been meaning to make this joke for the next time Seth and I are on the same call, but I just needed to make a joke about how I was just showing up for my interview with my Nalgene's, you know, just, just, just ready. I'm ready. I'm ready for my, my interview. Well then, I feel personally attacked. <laughs> I like my water. Okay? Way too long. You have a lot of water bottles, by the way. <laughs> Me or you? You. Those you are just, just kept coming. <laughs> I do always come well equipped to interviews. So anytime I'm on a call, I have a nice 32 or 48 ounce Nalgene or water bottle ready to roll, which can lead to problems if the interview gets too long. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's the whole point of work, though, is just continuously drink water so you have an excuse to get up from your desk. <laughs> Does anyone else do that where they're just like always want to have just a lot of water or some liquid where they just try an excuse to get up and move around? I would fail at an Amazon factory. Like I just would just not do well. <laughs> They'd be like, why are you taking like 12 bathroom bakes a day? <laughs> Whatever. It's good for some, some free interruptions. Mix things up a bit. Um, Co gave an, uh, a quick run through of all the various Emerald discussions that are going on. Pulsoft talked about funding for uh, the Magic platform that he's building out, which is based off the uh, Monorio funding system, but people can pull out like their credit cards and stuff and have it all show up in the same place, which I think is cool. And they can pay in like Bitcoin and fun stuff like that. Um, and HYC is just being awesome as always. What didn't someone open an issue on Meta? I think not even Monero Research Lab, but just Monero Meta about tweaking RandomX. I mean, to be clear, before anyone panics, there are no plans to actually do this. But someone opened one, right? Uh, yeah, I think I remember seeing something like that. But yeah, as you said, you know, we we don't see any need at the moment to tweak anything. Um, you know, it's always been, it's always been part of the expectation that should a situation arise uh, that we need to, we can tweak it. You know, I mean, RandomX has dozens and dozens of configurable parameters that we can change. And, you know, it was designed that way specifically to give us that kind of flexibility. Uh, but yeah, in, in the present time, there, there doesn't seem to be any need. Uh, you know, the, the stuff's kind of, Remind me, um, just a few days ago, I was having this Twitter conversation with uh, David Vorick about uh, the feasibility of you know, building ASICs for RandomX. And, you know, I guess the conclusion right now is uh, even if somebody wanted to, the, the economic incentive isn't there. You know, the, the first round, the first wave of ASICs that we saw in Monero they were hitting around the tail end of 2017. And that was when, you know, Monero had just come, come to its all time high. It was over 500 bucks a coin back then. And the block reward was still very high. So, you know, you could see that a company would, um, would see a potential for large income there. But, you know, from then till now, the, the block, re block reward is tiny, right? The block reward's something like 
XMR per block now. So the incentive just isn't there now. Even if, even if somebody is, is in a back room plotting to do this, I, I don't think they can make the financials work out in their favor. Yeah, it seems like that topic has been coming up a lot more recently in different spheres, just kind of people circling back to the idea of ASIC resistance. But um, do you know, HYC, what the efficiency gains of the initial Monero ASICs were? Like how they compared to a normal GPU mining? I'm curious how that would compare versus like what an ASIC on RandomX could potentially achieve. Um, I don't recall any spe uh, specific figures, but you know, certainly it was, it was more than ten to one. It was probably even more than a hundred to one, you know, for, versus GPUs. And you know, again, as we've as we've talked about a lot in the past, you know, the the biggest potential that that we see for a random X we expect is in the range of two to one. Yeah, right then. now, the, the total mining reward per day is only like $150,000. It's really not worth it to invest much money into research, I would say. Right. I yes, true. especially with the efficiency gains being likely fairly minimal, there's just not not a lot there. I mean, that is definitely the low amount of issuance on the Monero network is could be an issue for security overall, regardless of the ASIC problem. But it does have the nice side effect of making they're not being making it so that there's not much financial incentive for ASIC manufacturers to even try to build one against RandomX. Right. So Monero not pumping is basically a feature, not a bug. <laughs> number number goes sideways. It's a security yes. feature, exactly. It's the new stable coin. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I've been be able to think of Monero as like roughly two hundred dollars for a while now. So it is there is at least some argument to that yeah. to be made there. I used to have a widget that showed me price on my phone and I just uninstalled it because it just wouldn't change. So Bitcoin goes it's up broken. and down, other things go up and down, Monero just flat all the way through. <laughs> We we did go up a bit against Bitcoin recently. It was nice. Yeah, aren't we up over more than ten percent on Bitcoin in the month? Uh, maybe so. Yeah, I'm going to. Uh, yeah, yeah. I put think this in the chat here. I just realized the emission tail we're gonna hit in like five months. So if you check. If you check the tweet that I just linked in the chat, that shows the um, the dollar value of Monero block reward over time. Maybe one of you can share it. I don't know. Yeah, I'm working on sharing that on tw on YouTube for people. Okay. So basically, you know, from the 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 value in 2017 is that giant spike, and the value today is you know, noise. <laughs> so we're almost there, right, on the telemission, because you say it's like 0 0.8 per block. Yeah. And the tele is 0 0.6. That's right. Yeah, we're getting very close. So it should be very, very similar to the scenario now, I mean. It should, it should be May, in May, it should hit the tail emission. That's the projected date, I think. A lot of people are calling the amount of the tail emission arbitrary, which I don't understand because as I understand it, it was modeled after gold. That's so right. if you didn't know that, uh, you know, no. I think it's meant to be less than 1% a year was the goal. Um, um, I don't remember who it was back when it was first implemented. Someone was very uh, passionate about it being less than 1% a year. So I think that's just what they target. Was that smooth or was that someone else? Good question. Is smooth around or is he just doing Eon or? I don't, I mean, I haven't seen them do much in the Monero community recently. And frankly, I haven't seen really anything out of the Aeon community in a long while. Um, oh. So, I don't know. 
early Monero history trivia question, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's been around for quite some time. I think he he was active on Aeon or however you say that um, in like 2018, 2019 when I first started getting into Monero. But I think he's pretty much gone away with uh, like most of the people who were early on in, in Monero. Must have kind of faded into the background. Yeah, he had some interesting opinions about ring signatures in particular. Like, uh, mm -hmm. he felt that they were pretty much useless to implement because they didn't really offer the same sort of level of privacy as stealth addresses and the like. And if you take certain assumptions to the extreme, then who even needs these? They're a waste. You should just operate assuming they won't work. <laughs> so there were there are definitely some interesting takes there. And there's some truths in them, but also I don't think that actually is true in practice by and large, but that, that was their opinion. And they, you can see that now they designed Aeon to effectively have no ring signatures for a long, long time. Um, and still now it's not just really a dead project as far as I know. Any mm -hmm. other questions that people have on YouTube, send them, send them through. Um, but Someone asked if we needed a crowdfund a Seraphos audit. Definitely, eventually, yes, we certainly will once we get there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sorry, regarding the telemission, it was calculated so the inflation was less than 1%, but for the first year. Afterwards, it's even less. Right. Just to clarify to people that it's not 1% year inflation from here to infinity. <laughs> yeah. It's actually the other way around. It's less than one percent, and then less than less than one percent, and year after year. Yeah, I didn't know that. Why are you trying to personally steal money from me? <laughs> and yeah. every other Monero holder, you're just stealing money from the people that, or the just people that hold Monero. <laughs> yeah, it's been a constant battle all the time. I, I never actually knew that it was modeled after gold's inflation rate as like the starting point of the tail emission. Obviously, like you said, Andres, there's the constantly approaching 0% inflation well, rate in Monero, but starting at 1% because of gold was not something I was, I was aware of. It's not because of gold. Bitcoin's emission schedule is modeled after gold. And then Monero's emission schedule is modeled after Bitcoin's. And the tail emission is just a target of 1%. It's not based off gold. Oh, OK. Yeah, it was just something I heard from the Arctic mine interview. I think you mentioned something about gold. Yeah, that's what I had always remembered. I may have been mistaken. Well, the point is it's not arbitrary. Someone truly put a lot of thought into it. Right. Yeah, they didn't just spin a wheel of potential uh, issuance rates for the tail emission and landed on 0.3 per block <laughs> with darts or something. 0.3 per minute, which ends up being 0.6 per block now. <laughs> right. Uh, hey, on the topic of decentralization, have uh, have people been watching uh, Bitcoin's hash rate go up and down? I saw it dive recently, right? Yeah. So first of all, you know, from April to June, right, all of the miners in China were being kicked out of China. And um, Bitcoin and a lot of other proof of work coins, their hash rates dropped by at least 50% 50 or more. Um, a number of the miners who left China went to Kazakhstan. So, you know, as of like, this week, 18% of Bitcoin's hash rate was in Kazakhstan. Just a couple of days ago, uh, Kazakhstan has had this massive civil uprising and the country shut off their internet. So 18% of Bitcoin's hash rate just disappeared again. Um, and you can, you can kind of see like from the April to June transition, uh, Bitcoin block times went up as high as 25 minutes, you know, from, from the nominal 10 minutes. So there, there was a noticeable impact. Um, transaction fees went up as well as people tried to get into the next block. 
Uh, it didn't. It didn't ever totally stop, but uh, it definitely ha had some massive delays. And you know, this thing in Kazakhstan could cause some slight delays as well. Uh, notably, you know, during the April to June fiasco, uh, Monero's hash rate didn't go down at all. In fact, it increased 13%, which was about the same pace it'd been increasing all year. So it was completely unaffected. So it's, it's kind of nice to see that, you know, our dedication to decentralization has, has actually proved its worth. We've been able to ride out a lot of very large disruptions in the global cryptocurrency scene without, without any impact. Yeah, that table you shared of the um, ASIC dominated chains hash rate during that, that ban in China of, of ASIC mining versus Monero was really, really fascinating with like the worst, uh, the worst of those chains, I think being decred, which was affected like 85% hash rate or something Yeah, right. when ASICs were banned in China. So it's a, a another very good sign of how important the geographical decentralization that we gained from something like RandomX and something that is ASIC resistant, how important that is even more so for a small network because Monero well, it's if not it were ASIC dominated would have been much worse off than Bitcoin was in a band like that, most likely, just like the other chains that are ASIC dominated were highly, highly affected by that change. I mean, geographic, you know, separation is an important part, but I think it also just speaks to just generally the capacity of RandomX to be able to efficiently be run on anything, right? So in theory, let's say a lot of the hash rate let's just say 30% of Monero hash rate was in China. And then for some reason they were able to snap their fingers and ban it. Obviously they couldn't because it's a CPU, but let's just assume that case, right? Well, literally a second later, someone could just turn on their CPU on the other end of the world, right? They don't have to take their hardware, ship it somewhere else or design something from scratch. And that's why like Monero mining is refreshingly boring, right? If, if, if it's efficient, it like just disappears, like if hash rate disappears somewhere, causing you to, you to be able to turn on your machine and mine efficiently, it'll just happen. You know, it's, it's just, it's so boring. It's such an efficient market, which I think is fantastic though. Like that, that is actually what you want, but it like, it just leads to, oh no, what happens if the internet goes down over here? Literally another CPU exists on the other side of the world. So it's fine, right? It's just remarkably boring. <laughs> <laughs> which is what you want in the security mechanism of a cryptocurrency you don't want yeah, exciting I, I just, it's, it's, and crazy and constantly changing and having to watch the news to know how much your how secure your cryptocurrency is like you want to know that despite geographical shifts and political shifts and all of that it's going to be able to easily adapt and it's even going to be resistant to those changes like monero would be i mean obviously like they could try to ban monero and they said it'd be practically impossible but the beauty of Monero mining is that it would be extremely resistant to that in ways that ASIC dominant chains wouldn't be. But like you mentioned, even if things got crazy and somehow they said everyone in China, you have to turn in your computers because you can't mine Monero, which would be utterly <laughs> not. I don't know how they could even accomplish that. But if they did, like you said, there's no constraints around ASIC manufacturers and lead times to buy new ASICs and they can have shipped across the world and all of that because if there really was something that happened the people who aren't mining monero now could start or the people who are could just be like okay i'm just going to turn on every computer i have and start mining to gain some extra monero until the network cracks so yeah i mean if if 30 percent of monero mining was in china and it got shut off you know everybody else in the world would party because their profitability just jumped up yeah <laughs> Well, they'd party for the one second before it would catch back up. <laughs> they would get one really nice block of profits. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Actually, and I, I love that the hash rate is, keeps getting higher and higher through time, but why is that? I mean, since Monero keeps being like buried in market cap or something, so I guess discover discoverability is, is less. It's just organic adoption and people needing Monero for actual use cases. And mining is one of the, it's the safest, less KYC way to get your hands into Monero. That's the actual main reason for, for the hash increase. I, I think a key piece is the accessibility of mining Monero. 
because you can just follow a guide and start mining with the hardware that everyone already has. I think that's probably the key piece. And that, that really enables the type of grassroots miner that's not price driven and that's not profit driven that I think we see as a, a large portion of the Monero network. Obviously, we don't really know too much about who's mining, but I, I think that's the, the key reason why there exists this kind of like grassroots mining central force in Monero, because anyone can just find a good guide, follow it and be mining Monero on the hardware they already own. Whereas like, obviously, I think there's been a really cool push in Bitcoin mm -hmm. lately for people to start mining with ASICs at home, um, which is great. It really helps Bitcoin. And it's difficult, though. Obviously, it's much more complex. You have to care <laughs> about so many. Mm -hmm. Lost him. Uh oh, they censor him. <laughs> yeah. they cut off I think internet. it's nice for people to start mining Bitcoin at home. <laughs> I died. I mean, I'm back. No, I, I think I think the real thing though is like even if the block is the uh, block reward stayed the same and the Monero price stayed the same, you would actually expect the hash rate to go up because there's technological innovation going on. So yeah. you should you know you should expect it to generally go up. Um, and even if the price is going down slightly and the issuance stays the same, it might, you know, they cancel each other out or whichever okay. factor is more important will be the uh, the indication as to whether the hash rate is going up or down. So at a flat price, it's not surprising to me that uh, that the hash rate is still increasing because people are buying more efficient CPUs. I think yeah, part I of it... I also found... Okay, sorry. I no, think it's part just... of it is people slowly... Uh, activating mining in environments where they don't pay for electricity. Like a family member of mine was talking about how can they use their free electricity to mine Monero? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I'm sure it takes it's a while for these kind of, you know, in these kind of ideas to spread around. <laughs> oh, or is everyone at college nowadays doing this? I remember being the one weird kid that was like mining in my dorm. <laughs> yeah, the Monero marketing department needs to start targeting uh, college students for for Monero mining. <laughs> Could be an ideal uh, target audience there. You mean because of the usage of Monero as well? Well, hopefully. <laughs> I mean, I was obviously making a joke about the uh, the access to free power that they have. So Just branded like right? have yeah. your computer do this, get free weed to be like the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's only half a joke. <laughs> yes, we are joking. Yes, of course. <laughs> but but it, no, but that's what you literally home. could do. Like if you were in a state where it was legal, you could have like a weed lottery. You like have your computer just like mine Monero, and then like if it was legal to give someone weed in that state then you just do that like oh congrats you won <laughs> it's like a idea. Yeah, weed know. universal income or something like that <laughs> there you are yeah, yeah you know and, and the heat from your miner helps uh, helps you grow your <laughs> <laughs> is the new monitor box we're gonna get in trouble here teams. yeah <laughs> we're kicked off youtube now uh oh Demonetized. you should put that content on monero.com for education, <laughs> if you really want like a traffic search, just free weed, free crypto weed, <laughs> it's all the buzzwords at the same time. <laughs> we'll think you know, about one it. One we'll thing, I mean, it. for example, here um, in Argentina, we have I, I must be the only guy with a computer that is not mining all the time because I hate the noise, but <laughs> everybody's just mining Ethereum and stuff like that with two or three GPUs. And a good thing about the Monero mining is that sometimes we don't even know that it exists, but then uh, it's great because it doesn't compete with the CPU one. I mean, they also they already have like a CPU for the mining to work, so or for the computer to work. So they just see that okay, since it's on, just mine yet another thing at the same time. Mm. And uh, as far as I know, Monero in that camp has no competition. Basically, I mean, if you're Mining with a CPU is just my Monero. Well, we got one competitor who was, I think, just created to compete. It's Raptorium or something like that. And it 
got some news articles about how scalpers are now buying CPUs because they managed to find out how you can mine on them. <laughs> so people got angry at crypto once more for oh, stealing geez. their PC parts. This is one of those kind of like subtle things about Monero, Monero mining that is very, I think very important and something that I think especially those of us who have an audience or have a platform that we can talk to people about the advantages of Monero is CPU mining does have the the massive benefit that it doesn't generally lead to um, scalping and massive increases in CPU purchases because people already have CPUs generally across the board. Whereas not everyone has discrete GPUs, and those are were generally just owned by gamers and people using them for, for compute. So that there is the advantage of we don't have Monero mining wouldn't lead to as much of like chip shortages and scalping and all of that, um, even if we were at a much greater scale, because of the simplicity of it being CPU mined already and people already having CPUs. So it's kind of a, a subtle benefit of of really targeting the CPU. Um, as a piece of hardware versus something like prog pow or something like that that still targets gpus it's kind of annoying actually i wanted like a, the most bare bones pc there is just for mining and it would still have a return on investment of like four years for mining monero it's not the uh not the best profitability at the moment for <laughs> it's sure. almost like it's very boring <laughs> <laughs> But it is something that over time does generally still pay off. I mean, I've been mining Monero for three years and it's been very profitable over the long run. But it's definitely not something like if you're wanting to mine something for like two weeks or a month, like, yeah, it's going to be not ideal, most likely. But that will also hopefully change over time as um, hopefully Monero sees some price increase due to real usage and real uh, appreciation of the value it brings. We just need to get some people to leave uh, mine XMR. They have like 38% hash rate right now. It's not good. And people are locked in there for months because of the high min payout. So they just keep mining. Yeah. I do definitely wish the admins would take some steps to push people off of mine XMR. But I understand there's no... There's no financial incentive for them to do so, but it would be great for them to take some steps. I think there are definitely some ways that they could try to push people off onto things like P2 pool and have a better effect on the the overall network. Um, but it's not something we should, I think, expect necessarily. Obviously, we shouldn't assume that pools are going to be good actors, but um, and not that they're bad actors, definitely not try to say that, but just that there are some things that could be done that would be nice that they'd have to make some sacrifices for, but would be cool to have more and more people pushed off of these um, centralized mining services onto P2Pool, or at the very least onto smaller centralized pools. But ideally, P2Pool is that continues to become easier and easier for the average person to use. All right, any final comments on mining or anything this month, Monero related, last chance. Okay, nothing at all. All right, well, final reminder, if you are a voter for the Magic Monero Fund, vote. Over half of you have, but you have a few more days, so get those in. That way the committee can get on going and give money to MRL and all sorts of other fun stuff. So do that, please, thank you. Um, and otherwise, make sure you stay focused on the Monero space, Monero community, Monero channels on Matrix, of course, Monero on Reddit, all those sorts of fun things. See us there, and we'll see you again next month. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye. See you, everyone. Thanks for Bye. organizing as usual, Justin. Bye.